Okay, hello and good morning. We're in week four, second nine weeks. Today goes here because it's Tuesday. Let's work these. Today we're going to do more on the exponent, so let's take a look here. You had some rules, <clears throat> but here, these are different. This one right here, only the 3 is squared, not the negative. So this is going to be a negative 9, 3 times 3. This one right here, the negative is squared, so it's going to be a negative 3 twice. A negative times a negative, that's two negatives. Remember, two negatives make a positive, and there's the difference. This one right here, the base <clears throat> is x and y. The coefficient is the number in front. Sometimes it's a 1. The exponent is a 1 here, not a 0. A 1 in 3. If it was to the 0 power, x to the first power is x, but x to the 0 power is 1. Anything to the 0 power is 1. I don't care what it is. It could be 2x, y, z, 4, uh, 5, 2 to the 0 power. Anything to the 0 power is 1. Make sure you know that. This one right here, the 5 is not affected by that 5, but everything inside here is going to be to the 5th power. It's almost like the distributive property. So it's going to be 2 to the 5th power, x to the 3rd to the 5th power, and y to the negative 2 to the 5th power. Now I'll put some negatives in here. 2 to the 5th power. Now I don't know what kind of calculator you have, but if you take a look at mine, it has an exponent key. Watch. Clear it. Press 2. Press the XY key right here. And then put a 5. That gives you 2 to the 5th power. And then times 5. That gives me 160. So all of this here is 160. This is a power to a power, so you multiply. This is a power to a power, so you multiply. Now, you can't have a negative. So if it's at the top, like this one, you got to throw it down. So the final answer will be 160 x to the 15th power. And then you throw this down, and it becomes y to the positive 10. It's got to always be a positive. So if it's on the top and it's a negative, you throw it down. If it's on the bottom and it's a negative, you bring it up. If I bring this down, it'd become a negative, but we don't want to make it a negative. Okay, that's another little thought that you need to know. This one right here, do you have more x's at the top or more x's at the bottom? You actually have one more at the bottom, and you subtract. So you're going to say x to the 6 minus 7, and that's going to give you x to the negative 1, and you throw it down, and you get 1 over x. And there it is. And that's all you do. You can think about it this way. You got six of them up top. And you got seven of them down here. These cancel. There's nothing left at the top, so you put a one. It's one over x. Okay, so just think about it. Do you have more at the top or more at the bottom? You have more at the bottom. One more at the bottom. All right, here's your assignment for today. Let's turn our attention now to geometry. Okay, there's the bell work. All right, on this one right here, it says draw a perpendicular bisector. So draw a triangle. Number one. And perpendicular bisector means it hits at a midpoint, so find the middle point, and then go perpendicular, 90 degrees. Go perpendicular, 90 degrees. Go perpendicular, 90 degrees. Now this one you got to back out a little bit. I guess this one kind of looks like it's on the triangle here, okay? So that point, remember PC, perpendicular C, okay? All right, so PC is what we're going to use here. So this one is called the uh, point of concurrency. Okay, 
Okay, that's where they meet. This point is called the point of concurrency, and it's also called the circumcenter. Okay, PC, uh, circumcenter. This one right here, draw a triangle, draw the angle bisectors. This one I remember with AI, okay, in center. Uh, angle bisector. So this one, this one looks like the midpoint there. This one looks like the midpoint here. So I'm going to go ahead and make these angle bisectors. And where they meet, that point is called the point of concurrency. Point of concurrency, and more specifically, it's called the end center. And I have those on the board. Today we're going to learn two more new ones, okay? All right, now before I do that, I want you to look at these two diagrams one more time, okay? This one right here was the circumcenter, number one. These distances here, the perpendiculars, represent the radius okay, of the circle that can be circumscribed. So the circle would look something like this. And it has to hit these points. Whereas on this one, these distances here to the sides would, uh, would be the radiuses for the inscribed circle. So you have a circumscribed circle and an inscribed circle. Okay? And so the distance from here to here is your radius. From here to here is your radius. And from here to here is your radius of the circle. So circumscribed goes around it and inscribed goes inside of it. Okay, there it is. All right, now let's talk about today's work. Put away your bell work. All right, copy down everything you see here. Well, let's talk about this here. Well, let's see what we got here. Median, that's a new term, okay? So we did perpendicular bisectors. We did that one. We did two, we did angle bisectors. Today, we're doing number three, which is called a median. And number four, which is called an ortho, uh, let's see, median and then altitude. Okay, these are the four you need to know. This one is called the circumcenter. Circumcenter. This one is called the end center, the point of concurrency. This one right here is called a centroid. I know it sounds alien, but that's what it is. And the altitude is called the orthocenter. And you need to know that. Okay? So copy that down and put a big star by this. These are all four of them right now. So let's draw a triangle right here. And let's do a median. A median is a midpoint. Midpoint to vertice. So the middle is here, and you go here. That's called a median. The middle is here, and you go like this from this endpoint. Those are medians. The midpoint is here, and you go to the endpoint here. And this point right here is called a centroid. And I know it's a lot to memorize, but that's why you have to study. Okay? You can't wing this. And since I scrambled the test online, you can't really work with anybody either. So you have to know it. Now look up here. What you need to know is that the short piece 
might be 5. Let's say the short piece is 5. If the short piece is 5, then the bigger piece, the bigger piece from here to here is double that, 10. Just remember that. If the bigger piece is 10, then the short piece is half of that. And the whole thing, from here to here, the whole median is equal to 15. So you can memorize it like that, or you can use a formula. So the short piece is equal to one-third of the whole median, which is 15. So one-third of 15 equals 5. Okay, you reduce it. Okay, this one, the bigger piece, the big piece, the big part, is equal to two-thirds of the whole thing. Okay, you got to know that. All right, let me see if you can draw this. Okay, so draw this triangle and try to make it look like mine. Okay. Now I want you to do the midpoint or the medians. So my midpoint is here. I guess it's here. And I guess this one is probably about here. So I connect these points. And this point is called a centroid. So let's say I tell you the whole thing from here to here. The whole median is 21. The whole thing. I want you to find the short piece and the long piece. Or the big piece. Big part. Well, the short piece is one-third. And the big one is two-thirds. Okay, it adds up to 1. So 3 goes into 21. 21 divided by 3 is 7, so that piece is 7. And this one's twice as big, so you double that and get 14. If you want, you can use the fraction. So 2 over 3 times 21 over 1. 3 goes into 3 once. 3 goes into that 7. 7 times 2 is 14. Okay, make sure you can multiply fractions. Okay, that's your centroid. Let's talk about the orthocenter, or the altitudes. All right, first of all, there's three types of triangles. Okay, so the altitude is the height of a triangle. So you have type 1, which is an acute triangle. Type 2, which is a right triangle. And type 3, which is an obtuse triangle. So you got three possibilities for this one, okay? So this one, if you drop straight down from here, that's an altitude, okay? The height of the triangle. It's not a midpoint. So if you turn your triangle where this point is at the top and you drop straight down, that's an altitude. And if you turn it where this is at the top, this vertice, and you drop straight down, that would be an altitude. Now. It doesn't kind of, kind of look like mine's going to, there it is right there. Okay, that's your orthocenter. So write that down. So this one is inside. Orthocenter. Okay. And this one is in. Now the altitude, if you're standing up here and drop straight down, you got that line. And if you turn it like this and you drop straight down, you got that line. And if you turn it with this vertice at the top, you have this line here. So this line here is going to drop straight down. And they all hit at this point. So that one is on the triangle if it's a right one. And if it's an obtuse, if this point is at the top and this is your bottom, you drop straight down, you have that one. If you turn it like this, where this is your bottom and you drop straight down, you got that one. And if you turn your triangle where this one is at the top and you drop straight down, you got that one. Now this one you gotta like back it backwards and go there. So that one, the orthocenter, is outside. So on an obtuse triangle, it's outside. Okay. Now number eight on your workbook is a little harder and it's gonna take more time. And I'm gonna show it to you, but in the meantime, I want you to read and study example five. So if you finish your work today, I want you to read that example. And number eight 
Um, we're going to skip it for today, unless you're like really a genius and you can figure out example five, then number eight is the same way. All right, here's your assignment, and you can skip number eight. Tomorrow, I'll go over that one with you. All right, have a good day.